guys. So it's been a minute since I've done a vlog. So today felt like a good day. I've got three stops, five dogs, um, but it's gonna be a pretty chill day. So let's get started. So first I've got Ginger. She gets like uh, three eighths. No, thank you. And three eighths on her back and then I do the purple guard in select areas. I'll show you. But I wanted to say on like a little dog like her, um, a lot of times I will use the smaller Creativa, you can use a Rivera, um, whatever, five in one flipper, the smaller. In the hair school world, we call them trimmers, and I think that makes more sense. So we're gonna say trimmers, so that's what I'm talking about. Making sure you got a good view. Um, so anyway, I like using these, cause she's got, like, it's kinda hard to see cause she's so fluffy right now, but like, she's got these like little pencil legs and she gets really testy if uh, you run down her legs with the clippers at all. But especially if you're using the big ones, like she just is like absolutely not. Um, and I can understand you got little tiny legs, so we don't want to hurt you. So just go in with this one. And I just, I don't press super, super hard. Um, we'll just go down and then we're going to back brush. We've talked about this before, but just quickly going over it. I've heard groomers say that back brushing takes things too short. Um, it's just simply not true. That's why you have a guard on there is because that's going to control how short it goes. So I think if you don't back brush that you have more opportunities for your hair to haircut to be uneven or it's going to require more hand scissoring to make sure that you don't have spots that are longer. So I do back brush and I recommend it too for especially when we're starting off. So we're just gonna back brush and that way we can just really gently go over her. Um because you'll see she gets real testy. She's gotten a lot better. Like I think me and her know each other really well now. So like I know like I said not to do the clippers on her legs and her dad Whenever I first started, he requested anal glands, and Ginger is not on the same page about the anal glands, are you? So um, we don't. I don't do her anal glands. She can go to the vet for that because uh, she's just not tolerating it, and um, I don't think it's my job to piss her off or, you know. And I I don't know the reason that she gets upset for her anal glands. They can't talk, so like. If it's hurting her in any way, then I don't want to do that. And the vets um, do them internally, which is a bit different if you're not a groomer. It's different than how the groomers do it. We do it externally. So um, if you want to go to the vet to get your anal glands done, that is all your choice, girlfriend. I'm not going to fight you on that matter. Okay, so that's pretty much all I want to do with the blue. I'm going to go in with my dark purple. Oh, and I'm using a 40 any of the blades is fine. So these are the more expensive diamond blades, but they also have these silver ones. That's like what this comes with. Either is fine. They have the same lengths and all that. I think that the diamond ones last longer, but I've heard people say that they don't do that. So, you know, buy whichever one you like. And this is by Wall. I don't know if I said that. I know I said a Creativa, but I don't know if I said Wall Creativa. I'm trying to get off drinking Red Bull, so I'm just like drinking random drinks right now. I had taken my sister to the dollar store over the weekend. She ended up sleeping over. Was it? Yeah, it was over the weekend. Uh, and uh, we went to the dollar store and got a bunch of stuff, and she'd gotten this Hawaiian bunch and didn't drink it. And I saw it in my fridge this morning, and I was like, you're the one, because it's just that, or her Dr. Pepper. I don't drink a lot of brown soda, like, I don't know, I just don't crave it that much, I guess. Like, I don't dislike it, but I just don't, it's not something I reach for. Um, so the only time I'll drink the Dr. Pepper is if it's like all I have in my fridge and I don't want water. So anyway, I, it was that or Dr. Pepper this morning and I was like, I don't really want a Dr. Pepper, so we're going to go with the juice. So I just took this on the back, on the insides, and then we'll either go down the cheeks on this side too. These areas tend to uh, get matted, so 
so I like to take them shorter. And then a mole. Okay. <laughs> this bitch in my ear. You know, the little talking girl that comes with your phone? Mm -hmm. She said, she's like, I'm on it. In my ear, like a freaking ghost. <laughs> she like, if she hears anything that sounds even slightly like her name, she'll like interrupt my video. I'm just like kind of scared that she ended it. I just took that all over her chest. I'll flip her around in a minute so you guys can see a little better. And then I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take it down the back of her legs. A little bit on the side. I'm going really gentle. You can see like he's, that side eye she gave me. That was her like, girl, don't don't push me. I'm gonna let you know, girl. That's what she's saying. She's licking her little lips. That's another sign. They're they're thinking about it. They want to. Like, you're good girl, you're not gonna bite me, are you? I have an interesting like so. She's never full on gone after me, but she'll definitely like yell and let you know, you know? Some of them like don't go for a full bite, they go for like the scare factor. She's kind of more like that. But I think if you pushed her, she wouldn't have any trouble letting you, letting you know. <laughs> um, actually, funny story about her. Her parents, um, okay, so like I said, she's always kind of been like a little, like, that's press, you know, and, uh, her parents, I, like, for a long time, I wouldn't give her bows or anything, and then one day I decided, I was like, you know what, like, I'm gonna give her some bows, um, she's so cute, she looks so good with bows and whatever, and, uh, basically I came back the next time, they were like, don't put bows on her, because, Essentially, if you try to put bows on her, um, she like bites her parents. <laughs> try to get them back off. So they're like, don't do that, please. So anyway, Ginger doesn't get bows. She just gets a little thing around her neck because she's testy. And that's one thing if you're a new groomer, you'll learn is if a dog is testy for you, always testy for their owners too. Unless it's just like, oh, they just don't like their nails done or something like that. That's a little different. You see the like lip, like flipping, like. Lip licking. <laughs> My brain is like, that's not right, but what is? So yeah, just just watch him. That that's for like letting me know, like I'm getting a little peeved over here. You're pushing your limits, grooming lady. So yeah, I'm just going like real, real gentle. Up and gentle. Can't talk. It's early. She's my first one of the day. I I was well. I didn't necessarily forget to film whenever I started this morning. I just like was still up on, in the air if I was going to film anything today. And I decided that I was. So anyway, I'm gonna go and get the rest of her body shaved and then we'll check back in when I go to the next stop. All right, groom number one. Three inch all over. Little feet, cute face. All right, I'm gonna go bring her back in. All right, here is Miss Dolly. You know what? Man, too crazy. Yep. Don't worry about my stuff, you know. Um, but I wanted to say, I started using my sun visor here. I know, sorry, Dolly. Um, hold on. Or sun, what do you call it? Sun shade? Sun visor? I don't know. I started using that up front so that the van doesn't have to work so hard to stay cool. Um, and I really feel like it makes a big difference. Also, extra perk, if you don't have your window done like mine, it will stop random people from peeking in at you while you're trying to work. So definitely recommend, I think I got that off of Amazon, um, but just any sun visor works. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend it. I do think it makes a big difference in helping the van stay cool. Um, Hanvey has been having, a, I, I've been hearing through the grapevine that hanvey has been having major air conditioning issues with these back here. Um, and I don't know that the sunshade's gonna help with that back air conditioning. I don't think that they really know what's going on from everything I'm hearing. Um, but if you're having that problem, then I would just keep on them about it. It's a touchy subject. I'm like, how involved do I get? Because it's not personally affecting me, but I've also told 
tons and tons of people to go out and buy these vans and then I'm seeing people that are getting their vans in the same week their air conditioning goes out and they can't use it so I'm like kind of in this like weird zone of like what do I do because I'm over here I don't get paid to promote their stuff I'm promoting it because I like it but I'm not I can't in good conscience tell somebody to go out and buy a hundred thousand dollar van if their air conditioning is going to go out a week after getting it like that's kind of insane so anyway I guess my recommendation is before you buy a Hamby van I would talk to them about the air conditioning right now I'd be like, do you have any solutions? Like what happens if my air conditioning goes out? What's the plan? Um, because again, I can't in good conscience tell people to go buy something that is gonna go out on them in a week. That's, I don't know what's going on. But um, anyway, for, for your upfront area, that will definitely help keep that area cool. As far as I know, the Mercedes part has not been having issues. It's these air conditionings from Red Dot is what I'm hearing. Okay, through the grapevine. Just saying. All right, here is Dolly's after. She actually got like the same kind of haircut as her sister. I did the 3 8 inch with the purple guard and the front and back end and all that stuff. Uh, but obviously she looks different because she's a different type of breed. So <laughs> there's her after. All right, so I just ran back home because um, I finished up the first two dogs and noticed that some of my nails are lifting. I haven't had to use this glue in a while, so I hope it's not all dried out. But this set was a crazy one. I want to to cut this a little more. Anyway, so this set... Um, was one that he worked really, really hard on. And he was like, go, I normally do two weeks. And he's like, this set, you're doing three to four. So if this is even got any glue left in it, then I feel like I see it in there. I just haven't used it in so long, I think that it kind of dried into itself. So if I can get, oh yes, okay. So just gonna glue her down a little bit to hopefully keep it for another couple of days. If I can get it to last until like next Monday, that would be great. If it's thick though, it definitely is drying out. I have to let him know. Yeah, so this will like basically keep him on so that I can make another week, preferably. Normally, I go on Wednesdays to get my nails done, but um, like I said, I'm trying to get four weeks out of these because they were very expensive too. But they're long, so I think that's why they're starting to lift up. So, smear this around a little better. The things we do for beauty, huh? But yeah, I went through a phase where I was like breaking a lot of nails. So he just gave me some nail glue to use at home. So that hopefully I can fix it without having to come up there all the time. This one was the bad one. Feels pretty secure now though. <laughs> Alright, we got Nina next. Her family is so sweet. Um, last Tuesday, I think. Um, I had rescheduled. And I was here and ringing the doorbell, texting, all of that, and uh, nobody ever came to the door. So I waited like 15 minutes. That's usually my policy because anything like after 15 minutes is going to start pushing me to where I'm going to be late to like my next clients. And I don't want to be late all day because I was hoping somebody would come to their phone. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, I did my typical like 15 minutes. Nobody ever came to the door. And basically, um, 
her family is from Brazil, and the parents don't speak as they don't speak English as well as their daughter. So I typically text their daughter, who is not living close to here. Like she's off to college now. She used to live there, but now she's like off in college and whatever. So anyway, I was texting her daughter, and she was trying to call them, and like we just couldn't get a hold of them. So anyway, they've never done that before. So. I was not that worried about it, but anyway, so today she was like so apologetic, and I was like, it's fine. I don't penalize people if it's their first time. Like, they never, you know, missed an appointment or didn't come to the door or anything like that, so I figured just something came up, but I have really good clients that are so sweet whenever they make a mistake, and it's okay. We all make mistakes sometimes. All right, so this peach just gets the sun all over. Um, first came out in the van, since I was charging so much more, I in my head assumed all of the clients that I would encounter would want like really bougie haircuts to go with the bougier price tag because I am like two or three times more expensive than other shops in my area. And uh, through learning and trial and error, I learned that some people just want their dog shaved or shave it down. Um, and I definitely have some clients that basically make it feasible to have me groom their dogs by just getting them shaved every two to three months. She's actually on a six week schedule. They just like her short. Um, but you know, whatever works. That means no matting, using your cut. I don't have to be too technical. She does get like the poodle feet, uh, but she, Everything else is just shaped the seven. She also has um, a bad ACL, so as I lift her legs, I'm gonna be really aware to give them full support. And I'm using uh, the Artero blade. I really like the Artero blades. I only use mine for finishing though. Um, they're priced, I think, about the same as the. I have some Andis ones I use. They're like my old blades that I've had since I started grooming and I use those uh, for pre-shaving now. So they're my older blades. You don't want to use your good blades, especially if you do buy some that are more expensive. You don't want to use them for uh, dirty dogs because they'll dull out your shears more quickly or your shears, your blades more quickly especially dogs are like muddy and they get all kinds of nastiness in their fur so yeah and the Artero blades are actually slightly closer of a shape than the Andis blades too that's one thing I didn't know and I think something that's different in cosmet or, yeah, cosmetology versus grooming um, is that each company's blades are actually like different blades so you can buy three different seven blades from three different places and have three different lengths completely. So something to be aware of. This one is three millimeters and this one's 3.2 millimeters, the Andis. So this one will give you a closer shave. So something to keep in mind. Um, so I've got her and then two little chihuahuas. Done today. I typically do about five a day. That's my probably my average, but sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. I have some days I'll do seven. Um, it really just depends on what they are. If I'm doing a seven dog day, then I at least make sure a couple of them are baths. Just because my brain, after like three or four haircuts, my brain is just like, all right, I'm checking out. I've had enough. I'm getting bored. So that's just what I prefer. And sometimes I'll get people that ask me, like, well, how do you make enough for the day only doing five dogs? And to my to answer that is, well, sweetie, I charge my work. <laughs> so, uh, at the last shop I was working in, uh, to make, I, I just couldn't make what I make in a day now because I make, I was making like $50 a day at that last shop. And, uh, that's like half of one dog now. 
so I can do five or six dogs a day rather than killing myself doing nine or ten and make much more money. So that's the secret is make sure you're charging enough. We, you know, the, when you think about it, how many people would want to work jobs where you just have to work all the time and then you still can't afford the things you need? Like, what's what would be the point of that? You know, so it's, it's all about charging what you need to make so that you're not killing yourself to just be able to afford your basic necessities in life. So, charge accordingly and uh, that will make up for a little bit. You gotta base it off of like what you need to make and all that. So I base it off of like how much it costs to run my business, how much money I need to bring home to pay my bills. And uh, then, you know, if you wanna budget some extra to put in the savings, then do that. And if you don't know how to do that, then I would definitely recommend getting a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. Did you hear me? I'm not a financial advisor. Sometimes you guys will message me and be like, how much do I need to charge and da da da. I don't know. I don't know how much it costs to run your business. I don't know how, you know, how much your personal bills are or whatever. Um, that's out of my hands. So that's where you would want to get a financial advisor because they'll help you look at all those things and they will know what to tell you to charge so that you'll be profitable. And you can set up regular meetings with them so that you make sure that you are charging enough. So that's my advice is talk to a professional. Um, I know a lot of people like to just go around and ask rumors what they're charging and it's not helpful information because let's just say like the price I'm charging isn't enough for you to pay your bills. So if you're basing it off of me and it costs more to run your shop than it does my van, then you go out of business. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like sometimes it sounds rude to, well, I don't know. See, part of me is like, I think it's rude to ask people how much money they make, but people ask that a lot. This is my first Red Bull of the day, by the way, and it's after one, so we're doing good. I love those little Starbucks coffees in the glass thing, the glass container or whatever. Those are like my favorite. So I've been drinking those one of those this morning. I like the vanilla ones, but my gas station was out of those. They seem to be the favorite because even at, like, whenever I go to other gas stations, a lot of times they'll be out of the vanilla flavor, too. They'll have, like, the mocha and the caramel. I don't like the caramel. I'll do the mocha or the vanilla. If they don't have those, too, then I skip them. I've noticed that's my favorite coffee. I don't like black coffee. I have gotten to the point where I don't even like Starbucks anymore, which I never thought I would hear myself say, but my drinks are really, like, really so good. I don't know. I'm tired of spending like six dollars on a drink and then uh, not drinking it because it tastes bad. So, and I really, I've gotten to the point where I was just doing a blonde French vanilla latte and I would do three pumps of hazelnut and three pumps of vanilla. So basically if you don't know coffee speak, that basically means like they're going to dump in the blonde iced coffee and then do three pumps of each syrup and it should taste the same every time, right? Well, that's what I thought, but I have not found that to be true. So anyway, I just like, it was a lot of wasted coffee and wasted money. So I haven't been drinking Starbucks. I've been going to like local coffee places. I love the place that my assistant works. Um, she's a manager at a coffee shop in the area whenever she's not working with me. I love the coffee shop she works at, but they don't have a drive-through. And a lot of times when I'm getting coffee, um, I don't, I'm like, you know, not wearing makeup, not wanting to go into a store and talk to people. I just want to go through the drive through grab my drink and go. So anyway, there's a little coffee shop over by my house that does have a drive through And their coffee's pretty good too. So that's where I've been going recently. It's much cheaper than Starbucks too, which is an extra perk. So, oh my gosh, there's this place. We're just talking about coffee now. Uh, there's this place 
that's like on the way to like where my nana lived. Well, her, my papa still lives there. My nana passed away. It's so awkward to talk about. Um, Cause like, I, not for me really, but like I always like, other people don't know what to say when somebody dies. If they haven't had somebody die, well maybe if you have too, but a lot of times people don't know what to say. And it's like, so because I feel like it's weird to bring up, but whatever, people die, it happens. Um, so anyway, over by like going towards my papa's house, there's this place that, first of all, it's a tiny house village, which to me is so exciting. I don't think I could live in a tiny house, um, but I enjoy looking at them, and I watch those TV shows on Discovery about the tiny houses, and uh, anyway, so I saw this tiny house village on the way to my Nana's, and then uh, I noticed that it's going to be taking me a while to stay not to not say Nana as my papa's. But that makes it sound sad, you know? Like, just saying that it's just my papa's doesn't matter. Either way, so I saw this coffee place in by the tiny houses, and me and my sister decided to go there one day. You guys, they have this thing they call the butterfly drink. It's so freaking good. Um, and it, I don't even know, it's like a tea? But like, you know how like some teas they put milk in it? It tastes like, like a cereal milk, you know? So good. Um, so yeah, I'm obsessed. Oh no, she said, why are you stopping, lady? She said, does that mean I'm done? No, I'm sorry, I gotta do the rest of you. But I was just saying, I'm really excited about this blue drink. And if you guys have ever heard of anything like that, let me know, because I've never seen it anywhere else. And it's like, like, almost this color of blue. Maybe a slightly bit darker, but. I'm obsessed. So good. I don't think I filmed that poodle. Like, I was just driving away. I was like, I don't... I'm pretty sure I didn't film the end result of that poodle. But she was shaved. Poodle feet. Like, kind of a top knot thing going. Um, I'm not much of a poodle groomer. I like the teddy bear kind of poodle cuts. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like the shape. Not, I like how the shape face looks. But I don't like doing the shape face. I feel like I can't make it look as good as like some of the show poodle people. So I think I'm extra critical on myself when I'm room grooming poodles. But um, yeah, so now we just have a couple of baths left. I wanted to preface because there's one of these dogs and she like chirps like a bird and she gets very frustrated with me if I don't get her done very quickly. So I wanted to preface in case they give me her first. Usually they give me the other one first, but just in case they give me the little <laughs> one first, I wanted to say that I may not be able to film as much with her because she is busy. She's got places to be. She said, how dare you interrupt my schedule like this? It's disrespectful. So anyway, um, you may not see as much of Miss Lucy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny cause like the last like week, last week, yeah, in particular was slow, but I also had like a death in the family. I was going to funerals and doing all kinds of shit. So it wasn't like slow for me, but it was slow for business. But then now like jumping into August is so freaking busy. It kind of goes that way. Like I've noticed is like around this time people take like last minute vacations and stuff. So sometimes I'll have like a week or so, so that's like a lull. But like every time I'm like, okay, I'm going to add new clients, then all of a sudden I'm super busy. So I, I have not been able, ever since I closed my books, I haven't been able to add anybody else. Like I'm just scared the second I go to do it that I'm going to get too far booked out. And I don't like being six weeks booked out because if something comes up, it's such a nightmare trying to like get things like rearranged. Like if God forbid my van went out of service or anything like that, you know what I'm saying? It's just like really stressful. Or if some of one of your six weeker needs to like move around or whatever like you either have to like hope you can find somebody to trade spots with them or you have to make them wait an additional six weeks and I've literally lost clients for that kind of stuff that somebody had to wait basically like a whole nother groom period to get in so they ended up going to other groomers and then never saw them again and they were good clients so anyway I've talked about this before I think but I can't sometimes I'll make a video and I just don't like it and I won't end up filming it or uploading it so like either you've heard me say that or it's in one of the videos that I didn't like and didn't upload uh so anyway yeah I try to keep myself no more than like three weeks booked out because that way when I get people that text and they need to get in like pretty quick I can get them in and those people are a lot less likely to re 
rescheduled and the people six weeks booked out because that was another thing was like sometimes people think that they can handle being six weeks booked out sorry I'm trying to think that's not the word I don't think no uh sorry it's like like I'm coming a different direction to the client's house that I normally go to um I normally come from the other way so I'm like trying to think I'm like is it this turn or anyway um but the people that are, like, some people think they can handle a schedule where they're booked out that far, and then they end up, like, canceling a bunch of appointments back-to-back, -back, so that eats holes in your schedule, and, like, you know, some people are good about scheduling with enough notice that you can, or canceling with enough notice that you can reschedule, and then I get people that, you know, cancel, like, last second or the day of or whatever, and that's really stressful. So, anyway, moral of the story is when I let people book within like a two to three week window they don't cancel they'll keep those appointments whereas like sometimes people that book further out they'll forget whatever have something come up whatever you know so that's my very long-winded way of saying that it works better for me to not be as far booked out and I stay just as busy if not busier I really do think I stay busier because people don't cancel very often so yeah <laughs> Okay, I was right, and they gave me the little, <laughs> the little loud one first. So this is Big Sis, so picture a fraction of the size and 10 times the noise, and that's the dog that you guys missed. But she's very cute. <laughs> I adore her, but she yells at me the whole time, and I just completely forgot to film anything. I was gonna film her like as I was carrying her out, and then just forgot. So. like work uniform like one thing I like about working for myself is that like I can dress however I want and you know I still have like work clothes that's like mainly my t-shirts and stuff uh, but I still like dress how I like because like I don't know the way I view it is like you know different businesses have different levels of like professional and like when you're talking about your dog groomer like I don't know I mean you can wear the nylon I think that's nice because it's fast drying and everything I guess it depends on your look and I'm an unconventional person I could say so I don't I didn't want that for my business to like have to dress and like a hoity toity kind of outfit and be doing too much. I like to wear comfortable stuff that like I feel good in. That like if I'm stopping at a gas station or whatever, that I feel good about that. Um, I just, I don't know, the nylon doesn't do it for me. But yeah, I think that's the beauty of running your own business and working a job like this in general like if you're working in an office or whatever then yeah maybe like a suit or whatever but I don't know working for yourself I think that's the beauty of it dress however you want and uh I mean I could throw my business professional on and a lot of people especially in this area would still be like the tattooed girl ah you know so anyway I think just kind of like being myself like when you're looking for somebody to groom your dog you want somebody that's like real in my opinion and that's what my customers have told me like they want a real person that they feel comfortable with and uh, I just feel like being more myself gives like my clients extra security I don't know that's just me but yeah um, my assistant I let her wear whatever she wants um, I just tell her like and I, I would say this too like for anybody I don't wear sandals um, because I don't want hair splinters in my feet and I also don't want to risk dropping a shear on my foot. I think if you're on like any of the grooming forums, you've probably seen that picture. Uh, so I will say like closed toed shoes. Um, but other than that, wear what you want. I see some groomers that like to wear shorts. I don't wear shorts, but that's just because I don't want like the hair splinters and stuff in my legs. 
Um, but girl, if you're comfortable in shorts, then wear shorts and wear whatever shoes are comfortable for you and like, you know, what you feel good in, you know? So anyway, I just thought I'd t touch on that today because I got like my shirt tied up. Oh, somebody's calling me, so let me end this because it's going to cut me off. Alright, I got Bailey soaking in a little bit of conditioner, so I'm just going to chill for a second. Sometimes I'll do conditioner, like she needs the extra conditioning today, uh, so I'm just using the Hydra Flash Thermoactive Mask. Uh, but sometimes too, like I'll do like an extra conditioner if I need like a few minutes to sit. Today's kind of been like go, go, go. Um, basically that last dog that I was telling you guys, like she, um, didn't come to the door last week. I kind of squeezed her in today. So it was like, did my morning appointment, went home long enough to glue these nails down. And then I went straight to her and then finished her and had to come straight here. So actually I'm going to be finishing up early today. Yay for that. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else relevant to life that's going on that I want to tell you guys about. Uh, I need to look. I've been kind of thinking about making a video on like things that I do to keep myself entertained throughout the day uh, while I'm in here by myself because most of, often I am working by myself. I, my assistant mainly works Mondays and she does like the van cleaning for me. But I do, I have a couple more difficult dogs that I need help with, and I have her work those days too, but um, I have a lot of different things that I do to keep myself entertained while I'm working so I don't get bored. Um, so I want to do a video on that. I think it'd be a good video for especially people maybe that are in mobile or that want to be in mobile, That because I think that was like one of the hardest things for me when I went into the van was like, the loneliness aspect and like you have to keep in mind that like I got this van and I was dating my ex and like two weeks into me having the van me and him broke up so I not only was alone at work I had to go home to an empty house which was really hard for me I think I held on to him much much longer than I should have just because I didn't want to be alone but uh, I think sometimes you gotta experience shitty people in shitty situations so you realize like that being alone isn't that bad or at least I think I needed to. I've always been a really codependent person so over these last like two and a half years I've really found my independence. Um, so anyway, a big part of living and working by yourself is for me keeping myself entertained because I get bored and when I'm bored sometimes I get grouchy. I don't know, does that happen to anybody else? I feel like that sounds like terrible but like seriously like It'll just like put me in a bad mood sometimes like if I'm like bored and then I like get in my head and whatever so anyway um yeah kind of thought about making a video because there's so many different things that I do and like totally like I just check in with myself at the beginning of the day and I'm like what are you feeling like today you want to listen to a podcast you want to watch YouTube you want to watch TV like what do you want to do so anyway thought I might do like a list of things that keep me entertained while I'm working maybe give you guys some ideas so Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I really love the vlogs, and I was talking to my friend Nicole, Nicole Dunn Grooming, the other day, and she was talking about how she also likes watching the vlogs because it's like we're like working together, and like I just said, for us mobiles that are lonely, it's nice to feel like you have somebody in the shop with you to talk to, so yeah. Um, I was like, you know what? I like filming the vlogs, and if people like watching them, then that works for me. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you soon. <laughs> Bye.